Hello, my name is Austin Belzer, and welcome back to the Austin Media Podcast. Uh, this is, I believe, episode six. It's been a while. Um, back to the last episode with Miss Claire. Uh, I was supposed to be back sooner, um, but anyways, welcome back. Uh, now you're in video, this is what, uh, sort of what that looks like, so welcome back. Um, this is so for anyone who isn't um, uh, hasn't watched the podcast or listened to the podcast rather before, this is a short form podcast discussing movies, video games, technology, computers, and so much more. Uh, and I'm your host, Austin Belzer, founder and uh, editor in chief of Austin Beat Media. So, but before we get into all that fun stuff, um, I want to th- thank some patrons of mine uh, specifically. Uh, Thomas Stoneham Judge from MoviesForReal.net, uh, Shane Kanto, who is uh, known on uh, on YouTube as the Wasteland Reviewer. He could also read his content on this pop along among many other uh, outlets. Uh, Joseph Davis, who's also writing for Sif Pop, uh, David Walters, and Philip Mula, and Matthew Simpson of Awesome Friday. Thank you so much for supporting me and my work. Uh, it means the world to me. And if you'd like to become a patron, you can head on over to patreon.com slash awesomebmedia or awesomebmedia slash support for more information on how to become a patron. So thank you so much, um, each and every one of you. This would not be possible without your help. Um, so what are we talking about today? Uh, we're we're going to be talking about movies, TV, and music. Um, specifically, in the movie section, we're going to be talking about Lightyear, uh, what other Toy Story characters get their own origin story? In the TV section, we're going to be talking about Miss Marvel, uh, episodes one through five, I believe. Um, and then For All Mankind's episode one, uh, season three, episode one through five. Uh, and then the music section, uh, we have uh, thoughts on Muna's debut album, uh, which is also titled Muna. Uh, apologies if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. Uh, and then uh, we'll close out the show with what I've recently posted. So, without further ado, let's get into the show. So, this time last week, or I guess earlier this week, I saw Lightyear. Um, for those who know me, I'm a big Toy Story fan. Uh, so, my expectations were probably down here for Lightyear. Uh, I've seen pretty much every Toy Story movie that has come out. Uh, I've seen the Toy Story tunes. Um, I think, I think there hasn't been any Toy Story content I haven't consumed, even if it's video games, um, because I've seen the Buzz Lightyear of Struck Man movie, uh, that was the original Buzz Lightyear movie, uh, I've seen all four Toy Stories, I've seen all the Toy Story tunes, I own all the Toy Story tunes, I've seen Forky Ask a Question, I've seen Lamp Life, um, and I've seen uh, the Ducky and Bunny shorts. Um, I forget what they're called off the top of my head. Uh, so again, my expectations were down really low. Um, so I was very surprised when I went into Lightyear, and it was good. Um, right now, I'm floating at a three, three point five or four out of five for the movie um, because. There are some problems with it, but we'll get into those later. Um, so coming into it, the reason my expectations were low were because of the Buzz Lightyear Struck Man movie. It was a goofball comedy that I really, really loved. Um, and surprisingly, a lot of it was adapted for this, this movie. There's little things here and there for those who have seen the show or the movie. Um, that just kind of sing. Um, and, you know, there's, being a Pixar movie, there's a bunch of Easter eggs, you know. There's a uh, Carillium uh, field or something like that in the movie. Um, he, he repeats a lot of the same lines he does. Buzz uh, repeats a lot of the same lines he does in the original Toy Story movie and Toy Story 2. Um, no lines for Toy Story 3 or Toy Story 4, though. Um, but... It's interesting. It's much more focused. Whereas the Buzz Lightyear cartoon 
was more focused on the screwball comedy of it all and the sci-fi fair. Um, this is much more, Light Year is much more focused on the drama of it all. I, I got very heavy 2001 A Space Odyssey vibes, Interstellar vibes, um, and more modern sci-fi um, like The Martian. Um, because really, at the end of the day, um, what Light Year is about is uh, Buzz Lightyear's failure and his need, his compulsive need to finish the mission as he set up in the movie. And it's really quite a touching um, story because I, I don't think the movies, the four Toy Story movies, have ever, ever allowed Buzz to really have a human moment outside of the um, moment they have in Sid's house in Toy Story 4. So it was really nice to get a human moment where Buzz was like, ah, I screwed it up, and I got to make it up to everyone, which was interesting. Um, I, I love that part of it. Um, some of the things that didn't work for me, though, um, were some of the story beats, which I will not get into um, because they're spoiler-filled. Um, but, yeah, I, I just couldn't vibe with Chris Evans uh, it just felt too much like Captain America for my liking. Uh, in fact, I could probably close my eyes, and, and if you hadn't told me this was a Buzz Lightyear movie, I would say, oh, this is Captain America in space. Um, because that's what it, that's how his voice sounds. So, for example, early on in the movie, he repeats one of his lines from Toy Story 2. And this is in the trailer, so it's not a spoiler. Um, so he says, uh, the, the line uh, in Toy Story 2 it's um, the line is read by Tim Allen as I'm Buzz Lightyear I'm always sure you know just kind of a self-assured but well-meaning um, guy but when Chris Evans reads it like it, it, there's much more effort being put into it. Um, it it's more like I'm Buzz Lightyear, and I'm always sure. You know, the kind of Captain America reader. Just imagine Captain America, and that's how he reads all of his lines. Uh, it wasn't for me. I actually preferred much uh, the Patrick Warburton voice from the Buzz Lightyear movie, um, which I think he's... I was watching some of it um, the day after. Um, or, yeah, the day after uh, I saw Lightyear. And I, I guess they changed the voice. To uh, much more of a Tim Allen sounding uh, voice, um, but anyways, it, it just didn't work for me. And some of the story beats surrounding the time dilation um, just plain didn't work um, because it felt like it was trying to be. It felt like in those moments it was trying to be too much of a 2022 film rather than a 1995 film because at the beginning of this movie it says in 1995 Andy got a toy uh, from his favorite movie. Uh, this is that movie essentially is what it says and it's like I don't I can't gel with some of the ideas it has um, being a 2022 uh, 1995 movie rather because it just has some very 2022 sensibilities about things. Like, I don't believe that a 10, I don't know how, how old is Andy in the original one, however old he is in that one, in Toy Story 1, um, I don't believe he would be interested in this. Um, I know at his age, um, I, w I was watching Star Wars, sure, but I didn't understand a lot of the, dramatic elements of it, so I don't, I didn't vibe with that. Um, but yeah, the, 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 if you liked Buzz Lightyear for Star Command, I think this will give you enough to chew on, um, but if you don't, um, I think maybe you might come into this with a bit lower expectations, because I think that's about the best way you can get in, into it, into this movie, is just having the low expectations. Because while this is a good Pixar movie, I don't think it's one of their best. I I, I would rank it somewhere 
Uh, I'd probably rank it neck and neck with Toy Story 2. Uh, I, I didn't like Toy Story 2 as many people did. Um, but uh, so, or maybe A Bug's Life, maybe somewhere around there. Um, that's about the vibe I got from Lightyear. Um, but Lightyear got me thinking, if Buzz Lightyear uh, can have his own origin story, um, what about other characters in the Toy Story universe? Um, so I was thinking about this. Other than the obvious Woody's Roundup Disney Plus show, um, I, I, I think I think a a pro so something like maybe um, an Owl's Toy Barn. Like, how did Owl become this way? I, I would like that. Um, I'd like to see how, like, what did Andy do uh, after college? Just how did Andy grow up? I know it's not a necessary thing, but like, how did what did he do after it, giving away the toys? Um, I'd also like to see maybe uh, even a uh, a pre-Toy Story origin for like, hey, what happens with Andy's mom and dad? What What's going on there? Um, maybe, what about Lenny? I feel like he always had a story that never got told. Um, Slinky, uh, a Slinky and Woody buddy cop movie would be cool. Um, those are, are a few of the ideas scrolling around in this old noggin here. Um, so. What, do you, what other Toy Story characters do you think get their origin movie? Uh, besides the obvious Woody's Roundup Disney Plus show. Um, I'd love to hear comments down in the YouTube video or on Spotify. Um, because I think Spotify is the only place you can really um, comment on anything. But let me know in, the, in those comments in Spotify and on YouTube. Um, and now let's go to TV. Um, so, um, there will be light spoilers for Miss Marvel and for All Mankind, um, but I will try and stay as story light as possible. So, let's just get into Miss Marvel. Um, I'm really liking Miss Marvel. It feels like the Scott Pilgrim of uh, the MCU. It really does. It's, it's so stylistic. Um, but beyond that, the story feels so ingrained in um, who Kamala Khan is. She's, um, as someone sa says in episode, I believe, four, three or four, uh, she's an ABCD American born confused Desi. And that so ties in with the story of Miss Marvel. Um, I originally thought I was going to the adaptation to where she's not, you know, uh, blasted with Terra GMS. Instead of here, it's like a little bangle uh, that she wears uh, that gives her the ability to tap into something. Uh, it, it's all kind of hand wavy with all that. Um, but I, I do appreciate it for what it is because unlike Moon Knight, um, actually I think it's more like Moon Knight than initially people would think. Um, because I think Moon Knight was very much about who is Stephen Grant, who is who is that person, and why is he Moon Knight? Um, why? And those are the stories I could really dig my teeth into, and especially with this past week's episode, I think I feel like it really gave um, a, a political edge to the MCU that I don't think existed before. Um, uh, again, darting around spoilers, I, I just think that what they did, they, what they have done with this show, converting it into a much more inherent story about uh, um, um, Pakistani children whose parents came over from partition and um, and how everyone has a partition story, how it became about her diversity rather than, hey, she's a fan girl obsessed with Cap Captain Marvel. Here we go again. You know, it, I, I feel like it could have very easily leaned that way. 
and I actually had some of those fears going into episode one. I like what they're doing with uh, damage control um, because I feel like in the Spider-Man films, they're kind of hand wavy with that too. Um, but here they feel like an actual threat. Um, and I think they'll play into some of the MCU going forward. Uh, again, no spoilers. Um, but I, I really like what they're doing with that. Um, and yeah, I, I just really appreciate everything that they're doing here. It's just so, so full of life, as Marvel is. And I think, I hope it gets a season two. I don't know if that this is going to be one of those Disney Plus shows uh, where it's just like Falcon and Winter Soldier, where it's just like, okay, we have, or WandaVision, where it's just one, one, one and done. Um, but I really hope it gets four episodes because I do want to spend more time with Miss Marvel uh, after she becomes, I'm guessing, a, an Avenger uh, or a young Avenger or whatever. Um, because she, it's just so much more fun and the story feels a lot more thought out uh, than a lot of the other Disney Plus shows, even WandaVision. Uh, it, this it doesn't suffer that uh, well, a lot of the Disney Plus shows that are six episodes where they're like, okay, we got to wrap it up um, and just kind of just dump on the audience. Uh, this just doesn't do that, and it's so refreshing. Um, in, in an era where, you know, there's MCU movies uh, every other month, actually four MCU movies a year, and then there's like an MCU show every month, uh, it's just so refreshing to see something that's just like, ah, awesome. It, it, there's something new here. It's not just, okay, teenager obsessed with Captain Marvel, okay, you, you get the gist and let's move on and make our own picture. It, it's no more, it, 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 just, it takes its time, it, it dives into the minutia of everything. And I just appreciate that so much. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts on Miss Marvel. I, I can't wait to see the finale. Uh, this, as of recording, it'll be next week. Um, and I think we, we're going into She-Hulk, which looks like another... I, I, don't, I don't have high hopes for that um, because it just looks like somebody just said, hey, what if we made... We can't make a Hulk movie, but what if we made a Hulk show? And, and it just felt like I don't know. Something feels off about it for me. Um, but that's it for Miss Marvel. Um, and then you can watch it on Disney Plus. All five of episodes, well, episodes one through five are up. And if you listen to this week, the following week, all six episodes will be up. Um, I might have a review. I don't know. Um, I'll have a link to request a review for patrons um, in the description. Uh, then, for all mankind, I just got done watching this uh, at midnight uh, as on, on the day of recording. Um, and um, I'm really, uh, I'm also appreciating how different this season is. Um, because for anyone who has watched For All Mankind, seasons one and two, they're very formulaic. Um, they just kind of have this air about them that's just like, oh, well, we need to get to this thing uh, by the end of the season. Um, and it's a race towards that. And while that does that is still happening uh, in the season, um, I feel like it's much more thought out. Um, like, I, again, uh, no spoilers, but um, I feel like, as if they said, okay, we have 10 episodes. We don't need to draw it out over 10 episodes. So we don't need to... There are certain things we can abbreviate, unlike Stranger Things, um, which I won't be talking about because I feel like I need to spoil things um, for, for Stranger Things 4 uh, to talk about it. But, um, but yeah, For All Mankind just says, okay, we don't need to take our time with getting to Mars. We, we could just get there in, in the... Um, well, we could just get there within this arc and, and all the little things we could stretch out over the course of the season. And I think it makes it feel like, um, 
again, no spoilers. Um, but at the end of episode three, you're like, oh, this could have been like the season four ender right here. Um, but no, it just keeps going. So you feel like you're getting multiple seasons all at once. Um, so yeah, it, it's very refreshing this season to see um, what they're doing with that. Um, and I can't wait to see what they do next. I, I, I think it's inherently it's an inherently more uh, psychological and sociological season because they're getting into more of what makes these characters tick, what makes Ed tick, what makes Danny tick, and what where is the show going in the grand scheme of things? What what is the next goalpost? We've got Jamestown, we've got all that um, already well established by this point. Now what? Um, and I feel like halfway into this season, I think we're really getting into the meat of, okay, there's more There's more here than you initially thought in episode one of season three. There's more to these conflicts um, and just not so black and white, which I really appreciate. Um, in any media, uh, especially TV, since you get a lot more time with that conflict. Um, so yeah, check out uh, for all my time seasons one through three. I, I think um, all of them are on Apple TV Plus. Um, definitely check it out. And then before I go, I, I wanted to just uh, talk about Muna's debut album. Um, I was a bit worried for this one, uh, running theme with the podcast, but. I was a bit worried for the studio album because everything they had done so far was easy. And I feel like with Muna, uh, their debut album, they really just kicked it into high gear and said, what are the lessons we learned from all those EPs? And just took it to heart because I don't think there's a skippable song on Muna um, because it's just... It's just straight bops. It's like listening to probably the Lee Jepsen's dedicated album. It's just uh, there's no skips. Uh, the instrumentals are great. Um, if you like bubblegum pop, I think this is definitely your vibe. Um, so yeah, I, I I definitely think it's it's worth checking out. I I know there's some uh, some uh, other albums coming out today uh, that I haven't checked out yet. So I'll I'll be talking about them next week, but uh, but yeah, I, I love I love the album. Uh, probably a five out of five for me. Um, and then before I go, I just wanted to let you guys see some of uh, my recently posted items. Um, I posted the updates for the 2022 uh, Mid-Year Deal Awards, the winners for the Centennial HBA Mid-Season Awards, the a write-up of the first trailer of High School Musical the series. Uh, season three first trailer, uh, and then I used a digital copy of the unbearable weight of best talent the movie. I'll have uh, everything everywhere all at once. Uh, the Blu-ray copy review uh, up within the next week, uh, and uh, also Doctor Strange two. Uh, I'll have the digital copy review out, and a whole bunch of other things like summering, which debuts on Netflix next week. Um, so yeah, check back in next week, and thank you so much for listening slash watching. This has been the Austin B Media Podcast. Until next time.